Between now and Election Day, we are going to be interviewing all of the major candidates on the ballot for major office in Maine. With us tonight on 207 is the independent candidate in Maine's second district congressional race, Tiffany Bond. Thank you for coming in. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. You ran in this race in 2018 and in the first round of the ranked choice voting finished with about 5% of the vote. What was it about that result that made you think, okay, I should run again now? Well, when I started in 2018, actually 2017, I had maybe 17 or 18 followers on social media. I'd never run for office. Nobody knew who I was. So really that race was figuring out how to run for office. Now I know. It takes a certain moxie to have one's first run for office be for the United States Congress. Why not run for the town council? Why not run for the legislature? Something like that, establish your chops, and then aim for higher office. Well, I was a city official once upon a time. I was a parks commissioner for about eight years. Um, that said, the way that we compensate our professionals in Maine who are making our laws, it, it's not a living wage. I have children, I have a mortgage, I can't afford to live on those salaries. But additionally, I really like federal law. I work with it in my day job, and it's where I see the pain points, so that's what I wanna go fix. Let's start a little bit with the biography. Where do you live right now? Uh, right now, I live in the house that I bought to go to law school. I live in Portland. And um, last summer, we bought some land up in Sandy River Plantation. We thought we would actually be up there already. I didn't uh, actually enter the race until we purchased the property. Portland, but we've had construction to live. This is an important point. Portland is not in the second district. It is not even close to the second con congressional district. This is the second time you have run for office in the second district without living there. Why? My work is in the second district. And you'll notice I didn't run for this office in 2020 because we hadn't found housing yet. I only entered the race after we had a place where we knew that we were gonna land. But my day job is working most of the time in rural courts with issues that Maine gets caught up on. We don't have a good safety net. We don't have the ability to separate out folks when they've their, their lives have fallen apart, and I have to be in the position all the time of telling people, sorry, only mom can have you know, food stamps, and only dad can have health care, and we just don't have a network that supports us, and that's all federal. What is it like running in an election where you can't vote for yourself? One vote isn't what makes the difference. It's all of us together that do. Why are you running? Why do you want to be elected to the United States Congress? I need the laws to work. My day job is hard. It is hard because we have an inadequate network and both Jared and Bruce have had a shot at it. Neither one of them has done a good job and I can't be put in a position on a daily basis where I'm giving people hugs because I can't get their lives put together because the things that they have paid taxes for their whole lives aren't available for them. Whether it's those social supports or it's disability or it's helping veterans get through their work or it's saying, I'm sorry that your social security is threatened. Those issues are real and they need to get addressed and they're being missed. It almost sounds as though you might be more comfortable working on the staff of a United States representative or senator doing constituent work helping people out with the problems they have with the federal government. Well, I don't think Congress people should be outsourcing the job of making the laws we need. What is your top priority? What would be the area that you would extend most of your focus on? The thing that I think is the most important is if we don't have a habitable planet, nothing else matters, but that's a longer term issue that we're working on. I think our social support network is what's really failing. We have people who they don't have health care. We have inflation going crazy. We have uh, you know, uh, unsustainable living expenses, and we don't have anybody addressing those issues. All right, inflation is probably the number one pocketbook issue for just about everyone right now. What concrete, specific steps would you propose to address high inflation? Well, so a lot of it is global and supply chain. There's some limitations. Short term, I think what you can do is you can tie a lot of benefits that are received to inflation indexes a lot better. Social Security doesn't update quickly enough. It might need to move to a, a faster than annual cycle, for example. Would so that drive inflation down or would that actually push inflation up? I think that it is a small enough slice of the population that what it will do is save our seniors from starving.
All right, what other steps? So we need to look at things long-term. The best way you can address inflation, especially the kind we're in right now, is by building long-term resilience. So uh, we recently had an announcement that a mill was going to close in Jay, and everybody was lamenting that, but nobody came with their thinking caps on. Why aren't we taking those mill closures, which a lot of those industries are dying and having plans in place where we say, okay, well, what's similar and what would do well in a mill? Maybe we manufacture insulin. That's not all that dissimilar of a process from doing pulp manufacturing, or there's a lot of water that comes by mills by necessity. Maybe we do indoor vertical art, uh, sorry to me, indoor vertical um, agriculture, and then we can have year-round fresh food and, and better agricultural sovereignty. We have so many options of how we can repurpose those buildings that provide living wage jobs and are a lot better than just shrugging and saying, oh my gosh, this is so sad. All right, we're going to let that be the last word. Tiffany Bond, independent candidate in Maine's 2nd Congressional District, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. If you would like more information about Tiffany Bond's campaign, just head to the 207 section of our website or app. And stick around. We'll be back right after this.